Hi, welcome back. It's Chava. Uh, I have a little kitten running around the room who's very excited about my earbuds. So hopefully she's settling down for a nap. But if I suddenly jump or yell, no, get down off of me, you'll know why. Or maybe not, because maybe I will just give up and restart this video again. <laughs> Um, I hope you are all having a good day, a good week, a good 2022. May it uh, be, bring only blessings. <laughs> um, so today I have uh, another question about getting along with roosters. Uh, the last video um, that I posted, I answered a question about how two roosters can get along better. And this time the question is, hang on, I've got it here. How can I better connect with my cerebral rooster sister on a deeper level? The person writing in is a tiger. Um, so just a little bit about why I'm even using the words rooster and tiger and what sort of people those are. Um, and you can hear a bit more about how this whole thing works in the last video if, you, if I uh, am, am, am not explaining quite thoroughly enough here. So basically the animals are used to represent how we relate to people and things around us. They represent our relationships with things. Um, so the animals, the rooster, the tiger, the ox, the, I'm blanking out everything but sloth and sloth is not one of the zodiac animals. <laughs> I don't think you get sloths in China. Uh, the um, rabbit, there's one, that's an actual zodiac animal. Would you believe, I do know all 12. Um, these animals are used not to describe things like our deepest motivations in life or what we feel called upon to do in the world or what uh, we can give to someone else who necessarily who's suffering from um, a depression or who's feeling stuck in life and feels like they really need someone else's support. Like those deeper energies are described differently. When we talk about the animals, we're talking about relations. We're talking about how I get along with my sister, right? I'm a cat, my sister's a dog. It's really easy for us to picture the relationship between those things. When we say that, you know, how do two roosters get along together? If you grew up on a farm like I did, you have a really, really clear picture in your head about what can go wrong and what sort of things can throw that relationship out of whack. Um, and so usually using this animal terminology to describe interpersonal relationships just make things very easy. It makes it easy, not necessarily to fix the relationship, but to understand what can go wrong. Um, and so the animal terminology might be, seem slightly less scientific or slightly less uh, modern than talking about different personality traits and how anxious someone is, how neurotic someone is, how extroverted someone is. But if I'm going to say, for example, my sister is high in neuroticism and I am high in openness and extroversion. Okay, great. You know, um, I can probably work with that, but it doesn't bring a really obvious picture to mind. Whereas my sister is a rooster and I'm a kitty cat, you know, you can kind of see it. So today we are going to be talking about that specific thing. My sister's a rooster and I'm a big kitty cat. Uh, not my sister. My, I have two sisters and they are both, they were both born in the year of the dog. It does not sound good in any language I've discovered so far to say both my sisters are dogs. Um, it does sometimes slip out when I'm talking about <laughs> in this uh, in this in this context. Um, but our questioner is a tiger like me, um, and her sister is a rooster. So that's a very different sort of relationship. Um, and she specifically notes that her sister <laughs> is very cerebral, and that she wants to be able to connect with her sister on a deeper level. Um, <clears throat> So what do we know about these two characters? We know that one of them is a rooster. What is important to roosters? What do roosters care about? Roosters are all about caring for their family. They take care of their hens. They take care of our chicks. It doesn't matter, by the way, that we're talking about a woman. The energy that's being described, the attitude that's being described, the, the relationship towards other people that's being described is specifically a rooster and not a hen. We're talking about this uh, 
protective father figure or this protective figure that always goes out in front and always checks for danger and is always watching from some sort of high perch and is going to put itself between any members of its family and any danger that comes that's that's a very rooster sort of behavior as opposed to the hen which is going to be closer to the chick it's going to be a more immediate nurturing um, and so there's just two different behaviors and so we don't say that men are roosters and women are hens everyone who has this energy is a rooster so sister is a rooster what does that mean it means that the sister first of all um, cares about family cares about her immediate small little community of family and close friends and sees her position as responsible for them, as watching out for them, as going out ahead and finding where they can feed safely, of putting herself between anything that's coming in danger, of always being aware of where everyone is and what's going on. Because if you remember um, Harry, Harry Potter, like Molly Weasley, right? She's got the clock where it's got uh, everyone's name and it always lets her know where everyone is and if they're in danger, if they're safe, if they're running late, if they're coming home from school. Roosters love that. Roosters always need to know that everyone is safe, that everyone is where they should be, that they that they can see any danger that might be coming, that they can get out in front of anything that might be coming. Um, so that's like the main emotional drive of the rooster when relating to other people. Roosters, because they care so deeply about protecting and about keeping people safe and about being able to predict what's coming, roosters always like boundaries. They like to know everyone's where they should be. Everyone's going to come home on time. Um, everyone is going to call if they're not going to be there when they said they'd be. Uh, everything to do with precision and clarity and knowing that if I said I'm going to be somewhere, that's where I'm going to be because that way they know that they don't have to worry that I'm out somewhere unsupervised and a hawk might swoop out of the sky and eat me. Okay, so that's one thing. Then we have a tiger. And what is a tiger? If you picture just a big cat, that more or less does it. Okay, so the cat loves people um, to play with, to be friends with, to chase, to eat. Um, cats are all about novelty versus safety right because cats are sometimes awake and the most alert thing in the forest and they can see everything that's going on and they can hear everything and they can see in the dark and they can spot movement from a mile away and they can yes speaking of cats sorry about that. <laughs> okay so the cat represents this this great extreme between the alert cat who is kind of similar to the tiger in many ways, but a predator. So the alert cat, the awake cat is looking for new things. It's looking for things that might be fun or that might be dangerous or that could be interesting. And then on the other hand, we have a tired cat who wants somewhere safe. They want somewhere secure. They want somewhere no one's gonna bother them. They want to curl up in a little ball and sleep for 17 hours. Um, exhibit A, <laughs> come here MJ, come here. This is currently an awake cat. An hour ago, she was a tired cat. Right now, all she wants is something new and fun to play with. And so if the tiger, I'm sorry, if the rooster is all about boundaries and clarity and doing things in a routine so that I can predict where you're gonna be at any given moment in time, stop chewing on that baby. The kitty cat is all about novelty. I want new things. I want to poke things. I want to go places where no one has scouted ahead and I want to stick my paw in them. And I'm inevitably, yeah, right now she's playing with the candle on my desk. Fortunately, it's not lit. Yeah, you know why it's not lit? Because of you. Um, so <laughs> the rooster's whole deal is I'm gonna go out. Oh, baby, that's a hideous noise. I am so sorry. Just for her sake, I am gonna have to learn to edit videos, but for the moment, I'm just putting the candle in my desk drawer and you can't chew on that either. Go get your new toy. We bought my cat a new toy on Friday because she obviously needed something novel to stimulate her <laughs> so she would stop trying to hunt candles and other things that get hot. Okay, back to us, back to the question. So if we have a rooster who is all about, I am the one who goes out in front, 
I scout ahead, I tell you where to go and you're gonna eat in this area that I already explored and made sure is safe. And I know there's enough food for you. We have the tiger that sometimes they're okay with that because sometimes I'm a tired, sleepy tiger. You go off, you explore, you make sure we're safe. That's fine. I'm gonna curl up here in my den. But sometimes the tiger is gonna run way out past the rooster and he's gonna break all of the bounds of safe space that the rooster has established. And he's gonna be like, I should poke this with my paw. I should chew on this. I should stick my head in here. And I know that I'm gonna get burned and I'm gonna get bit and I'm gonna get scratched. But that's okay, because that is the price that I have to pay for receiving the mental stimulation that I need and for finding out new things, which is something that is very important to me on an intellectual level, on an emotional level, because I need all of the stimulation. I am, I am open and I'm, and I'm open to receiving new uh, experiences and to new, learning new things about my environment, about the people around me, because this is, this is one of the things I was put on earth to do. This is one of my emotional needs because this is my role in the community, in the family, is to go out and try new things and experiment and report back. And meanwhile, we have the rooster who's saying, ah, uh -uh, that's my job. I go out first, everyone else stays safe. That's how it's supposed to be. So you can kind of see how we could end up with a, some conflict between people's emotional needs here. So that's one thing that might be worth looking at. I can't necessarily tell you how to explain what you need to your sister or what you need to any rooster in your family in a way that they can take it in and that they can accept um, because everyone is different. Um, but excuse me one moment. You are being so helpful today, baby. So, so helpful. Where's your fish? Go find your new fish. Go find a new fish. Um, sorry about that. But I tried to do this videos during her nap time for a very specific reason. <laughs> but someone woke up full of energy today. That's my pet. Yes. Okay. So I'm actually, I'm not going to try and re record this because I think that this is really actually a wonderful example of what I'm trying to describe. Right, so we want to stick our paws into everything and we want to explore everything and we want to climb up on the computer and we want to chew on everything. And we don't understand about boundaries that other people have put up. Uh, we appreciate boundaries that are boundaries, like we do not want people to cross our boundaries. If I'm sleeping, I don't want you to poke me. And if you think that it's, I'm so cute and you want to pick me up and give me a hug and a kiss, I will defend my boundary because sleep time is my time. My personal space is mine. Tigers rep recognize and appreciate and need these personal boundaries, um, but they don't really have any sort of grasp of, this is a boundary that I've put out around a thing or a place or a time, but it's not my personal, my, you know, my personal space, my personal boundary of things I'm okay with and things I'm not. Tigers respect personal boundaries. Tigers don't get why I have to eat inside this field and I can't eat in that field or why I'm only supposed to explore the marked area and I can't go off the path. And if you've ever tried to explain to a cat that they're supposed to stay in one space, you can probably see how well that would go. So it's possible that there's some way to explain to your sister that you have a need for novelty for doing new things for learning new things for exploring new areas um, and that trying to repress that need will will harm you it will emotionally harm you it will it will stunt your ability to interact with the world around you that might help her understand that you're you know going off the path going out and doing stupid dangerous things and getting your whiskers burned is it, it's it's still being safe for you because the alternative to doing that is is it's going to harm you it's going to it's it's repressing your instincts and it's it's trying to crush down you know a natural part of your personality so i don't know if that's something you'll be able to get across but it might be that if you can if you can explain you know what safety is to you and that it's different from how she sees safety and how she wants to keep everyone safe that might help you to be able to understand better uh, or help her understand 
things that you do that seem crazy to her. It might even be, I don't know, that's something you talk about how to connect to your sister, how to bond with her. Maybe if there's a way to understand that both of you are kind of these go out in front and do it first types, just you do it very differently. That might be something you could connect over, your need for learning, your need for exploring. Um, and also your connection to family is something that you have in common, right? Roosters are all about family. They're all about their flock. They're all about protecting their babies. And you know, you're her sister, you're gonna count as one of her babies. I'm sorry, you're doomed. Um, and tigers form very deep connections with people, not necessarily the same way roosters do because tigers have this need to go out and explore and to meet new people. And so where roosters connections might be very, it, it might be like blood relatives and in-laws. It's like, these are my parents, these are my kids, these are my siblings, these are my in-laws. What more do I need in life? A tiger is gonna go out and explore more and it's gonna form connections with different sorts of people in different areas because, um, you know, I've got my family, they're great, I love them. I'll always be there for them. They'll always be there for me. I don't need to spend all of my time and energy on on um, promoting that relationship, on, that's not the word, nurturing that relationship, because I know it's there and I can trust it and I'm sure they'll be okay, because I'm okay, because I'm a big predator and I know that I can go out into the world and take care of myself. I expect everyone else can too. And so I don't feel this need to always be so close to be Mrs. Weasley, keeping an eye on when everyone gets home, I'm okay to let everyone go out and spread their wings and you know, expect them to let me do the same thing. And yet feel I feel as close to my family as the rooster does, even though I'm not always um, so directly involved with checking up on everyone and calling everyone and make sure, making sure that everyone got home safe. And in fact, because I feel so secure in my family connections, I can go out and I can meet new people and I can form new relationships and that doesn't mean I'm forgetting my family. It just means that I have, I have faith in them and I have trust in them. And so I can let them be and feel safe in our connection and feel like um, you know, we're as close as we've always been. So these are two things that, that, uh, that exploring and being first and finding new things and that connection to family that both roosters and tigers have, they express it very differently. They feel it differently and they see, they interpret other people's actions differently because everyone is interpreting what they see based on how, you know, what's going on inside their head and what they think they would be doing if that, what they would be feeling if they were behaving in that way. But you do have these two very, very close connections um, in terms of the things you care about and the things that you need to do in order to express yourself that might be areas that you can connect uh, in or that you could bond over, or at least that you could learn to understand each other's behaviors better um, in regards to those areas of life. So I hope that was helpful. Please feel free to let me know if it was, or if it wasn't, I love feedback. Feedback is the best. I am a tiger and I'm not afraid to stick my nose in places that no one was expecting and maybe get my whiskers singed because it turns out that was a toaster oven. True story, not me, my cat. <laughs> and uh, anyone out there who has questions, feel free to send them in, email, comment, uh, carrier pigeon, whatever works for you. Uh, this is really the highlight of my week, getting to answer questions and getting to dive into the, the hypothetical emotional backstories of real people. Uh, I don't wanna make, I don't, I'm not a novelist. This is where I get my fun. I make up stories for real people, not fake ones. I don't know what that says about me. <laughs> but in any case, I hope you have a great week, a great day, a great year. Take care of yourself, stay safe. And I will see you next week. Bye.